G'day, welcome to This Is Riffin. Today we're going to look at Space Cadet by Caius. So there's a bit of debate about the tuning for this song. So what I thought I'd do is I'd break it into different tunings, um, which allows you to play it however way you please. I think a main reason for the confusion about the tunings comes from the intro, um, what Kais is normally tuned to, and there's footage of Scott actually playing the intro um, in a different tuning again to the original. Um, so I believe that Scott's in D sharp standard tuning on bass. His is upside down as well to make it more confusing. Josh is normally in C standard for most of Kais songs, but I think he's most likely in D sharp standard tuning as well. And that's just because it's easier for both the guitarist and bass player generally to be in the same tuning. So if I was jamming with a mate, most likely I'd like to be in the same tuning. Um, it just makes it a bit easier. I could be wrong, so please let me know what you think. Uh, also, when I was working out the guitar parts, D sharp seemed to work best for most of what Josh was doing. I'm still a little iffy there for some of the bits because I can hear some slides in spots where I'm doing an open. So anyway, I've gone with D sharp standard for the guitar. However, I've also done the intro for you on the guitar. And to be able to do that, I had to tune it to C sharp standard tuning, just so it sounded like what Scott was doing. And so because of that, I also wrote a bit out for a guitar in C sharp standard as well. So in this video, you're going to get the intro, C sharp standard. You're going to get the backing guitar, well Josh's parts, majority of it, in D sharp standard, but also in C sharp as well. So you can choose whichever way you please. I thought this would help um, anyone who might play live or busk who like to loop, so they could like play the intro, the bass part, and then play the other guitar bits on top. You could be jamming with a mate, so you're both in the same tunings, or one could be in C sharp, the other could be in D sharp. So yeah, I hope that's not too confusing for you. I mentioned earlier that the intro is actually played by Scott on bass guitar in a different tuning to what I'm currently in. So I'm in C sharp standard. He plays on the album in D sharp standard, I believe. Uh, the clip of him on YouTube for play this riff actually can confuse a few people because in that clip he's in C standard, which is generally the highest tuning. So don't let that confuse you. This is the album version that I'm doing. And so if you play along with it, this tuning should be right. To play this intro, you'll need to tune your guitar to C sharp standard tuning, which goes like this. C sharp, F sharp, B, E, G sharp, and C sharp. The intro itself will only be played on the top two strings anyway, and I'll probably just refer to it as either the top string or the second string just for the sake of it, even though technically it is the fifth string. And I may even just say the E and A string just to keep it easy as well. So you're gonna play open on top string, seven to nine as a slide on the A string, open again on top, 
9 to 10 as a slide, open on top, 10 to 12 as a slide, open on top, 12 to 13 as a slide, open on top, and then 13 to 14 as a slide. There's a little bit of a rest there before doing a hammer on pull off. So 13 to 14, back to 13. I like to use two fingers there. And then from there, I use my second finger going from 14 on the A, 14 slide to 16, back to 14, before doing a 13, 14, 13 hammer on pull off. So you only strum that once. So that's still on the A string there. Before doing open on top, 13, 11 as a slide on the A, open on top, 11 to nine as a slide on the A, open on top, nine to seven as a slide on the A as well. So it's sort of like you're coming up and then working your way back with a few of those pull-offs added in. I'll put that together, a bit slower. You can let the open ring out as well while you're doing it. Scott does a few little vibrato sort of type things. So a bit faster. After that, we do open on top. Seven to five is a slide on the A. And a little slide can be done there to finish that off. Open on top, four to five on the A as a slide. Back to four, five on top, five to seven on the A. Then back to five, four to five on the A. And that's a hammer on, so again, use those two fingers, strum it only once. Five to seven on top as a slide. So I'll do that again from that open seven five sort of bit. So a bit quicker. to use my third finger for that part, the five to seven. Then you get back to the five with your first. And again. And then it's just gonna go open on top and play the octave on seven, on the A. So you do that twice and let that seven sustain while you're doing it. Does it again. Same thing down to five though. So zero, five on the A. Two of them. And then again, it will do the sort of move from before. Open, four to five as a slide. Back to four, this is on the A string. Five on top. Five to seven as a slide. Back to five. Four, five, four as a hammer on pull off on the A before going five to seven as a slide to finish it off. So I'll go from that little octave section where it's zero, seven, zero, seven. A few of those little bends, vibrato type things.
I'll now put all that together for you. So yeah, just start slow, work your way up. Scott's timing is a bit interesting when you play along on the album. So yeah, I just sort of go with the flow there and play what feels right to me. So it's not spot on. Um, feel free to use whatever fingers works best for you. We then get into the next part, which is zero, zero on top, 10 on the A with a slide. Open on top. On the A string, you're gonna go seven, five, open, all as a pull off. So one strum. Straight up to three on top. Two opens on top. Three, zero, three, five as a hammer on. Five to seven as a slide. And then five to seven as a hammer on, on the A string. Helps me there using my third fingers for the five to seven and five to seven. That's a sweet little move. So yeah, I use my third there. So open three, five, hammer on. Third finger slides to seven and then five to seven. So hammer on. The next section is pretty much the same, except the last tail end of it. It's different. So you're gonna do open, open on top, 10 slide down on the A, open on top, back to the A string, seven, five, zero is a pull off again. So just that one strum. Three on top. So that's a quick move. Then open three, five on the top string. And a slide down. We slide back up to five. A string, five, five, seven, as a hammer on. Up to the top string, five, seven, as a hammer on. And then three on top string. So I'll play that section together. Again, just using whatever fingers work best for you. I mix it up with my first and third finger. I sort of go zero, three, five, slide down my third, come back with my first, I think. Which allows me to then go to five on the A string. Helps it flow a bit easier. But there's definitely a lot of slides going on with Scott there, um, which sounds cool. The last little tail end of this whole section uh, does something like this. So it's five, five, five on the A string. Seven, back to five, then a four. Open on top, power chord at fret three. Three on top, five on the A, and Scott does seem to do this. And then open on top and two on the A as an open power chord for the top string. This bit's gonna look at the D sharp standard tuning parts on guitar, most of which I believe Josh does for the whole song. There's some extra layered guitar bits going on, which I'm not gonna look at, um, but if you listen closely, there's some 
double tracking guitars going on in the background, just doing some little other things um, along the way. This is as close as I can get to the album version. The solo bits are sort of more a bit of a, an idea of what you can do. Um, so I'll give you those bits in tab form to just have a muck around with. The tuning for D sharp standard goes like this. D sharp, G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A sharp, and D sharp. I won't fully go into every section with what to do. I think it's best I just, I'll play the bits, I'll have the tab up on the screen and just follow along um, and then try and piece it together with the song. As I was saying, I probably won't spend too much time looking at each individual bit of these guitar bits, but I'll just give you some rough pointers that might help. That open D string, so just the third from the top. Some parts, it, it rings out as well, and that's where I believe the D-sharp standard tuning comes into play better compared to the C-sharp standard. So mostly for those sort of hammer-on pull-offs, I'm definitely using my second and first finger to do those bits. So yeah, just follow the, the initials up the top, such as the H or the P for hammer-ons or pull-offs. For this part here, with the slide to seven and eight, There'll be some slides from say like five and six to seven and eight on the G and B. So yeah, just use your first and second fingers there. Seems to work best for me. I sort of slide from anywhere. First and second finger doing that. And then for the little tail end of it, Pinky to fret eight on the high E makes it way easier. So first, second, first for the five, six, five. Hammer on and pull off. Pinky. And then my third for that seven. This little section here, it sounds really nice if you let the D actually play over the top while you're doing the other bits. Again, you can hear that closely in the album version, which sort of helps seal the deal for me with the D sharp. It just sounds nice lingering over the top. And that's all just hammer-ons, slides. Back to the seven there, before doing the octaves builds up and 
This bit here, it sounds pretty much like Josh is doing this. Sometimes you do two tens on the bottom string, and sometimes just one. So I'm just using my, going to my pinky there for 10. With two of them. This solo section part of the song, it's just giving you some rough ideas of what you can do. It's not 100% accurate. So I'll just chip away at it, showing you what I'd roughly do. I'm not gonna dive deep into it, like what I'm doing with my fingers or anything like that. But hopefully it will just help you, give you some ideas of what you might be able to do if you're jamming along. He definitely does that little bit in there, you can hear that. Well, very similar to that. This bit I'll just sort of jam on, but it does like a similar thing to the start. Around the 10 and 10, and 12 is a pull off, up to 13. And then it just dances around there, so I'm holding that fret 10 on the B, playing on the high E, sort of like, 13s, 12s, 10s, 8s, 10s. So any of those sort of shapes just muck around with. Back to that sort of movement. With that slide definitely thrown in there. So yeah, not 100% accurate, but gives you something to play with. This part of the video is gonna be based on playing the guitar in C-sharp standard tuning. It means you can play along with the album um, and it should sound pretty good. You could also play with someone else who's in C-sharp. Maybe someone's playing the bass bits and you can play along with them. Maybe you're playing the bass bits yourself and then looping it so you can play this over the top. It's not 100% accurate, but I think it's pretty close enough. Um, and yeah, hopefully it can help in some way. You'll need to tune your guitar to C sharp standard tuning, which goes like this. C sharp, F sharp, B, E, G sharp, and C sharp. I could go on forever about how to play these guitar bits in C-sharp standard. Um, it's probably just a matter of you getting those tabs that I put on the screen, playing along with the song, and just using them as a guide, if anything. But there's a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs. 
the tricky thing in the C sharp tuning is when you do the seven seven down to that seven on the G. You can get a bit messy with your fingers there. So generally I'll use my second to start it, then my third. So they're hammer-ons, the HPs, just take note of them. I found in the D sharp tuning it was way easier playing those bits because there's more opens rather than the sevens. And so that made it just a bit easier. Uh, the seven eighths part. There's the slides to the nine and ten. So that's on the G and B string. And a little nice bend there. Bring her up and down. And then it sort of goes back and forth for a while. So just listen to the song and piece those bits together. When we get to the octave bit, the seven and nine. Um, it goes into this section. And I'm just sort of mucking around there roughly with what I think Josh is doing. It's probably not bang on, but it's good enough, I reckon. Um, sometimes he might double up on the 12, on the high E. Sometimes he doesn't. Just like we did with the D sharp bit, um, I'm just gonna briefly touch on what Josh does here, and then you can just muck around using these notes, and it fits in pretty well. Um, so we're gonna go 12-12 on the bottom strings. And you just sort of muck around. Either strumming both, or back and forth. And there's a 14-12 pull-off. Back to the 12. And then you can muck around with these sort of notes. 12, 12 and 10. Back to 12, 10, and 10, 10 and 9, 10 and 12, 10 and 10, etc. He definitely does this move. which is the 10 and nine, and then eight and seven on the bottom too. So eight on the second bottom, seven on the bottom. So I just like to muck around using those chords, pretty much. You can use your pinky on the 12. And then the next section is pretty similar again. It's back to the 12 12s. 14 12. And then up to 15 on the bottom. So 12 and 15. Strum them together or back and forth. And then it's sort of 15, 14, 12 on the bottom. 10 and 9. 10 and 10. Back to the 12. And finish with that little tail bit. So yeah, it's not spot on there, but it gives you a bit of an idea of what you can do. Well, that was a bit of a big video, but hopefully it helped you in some way. Please let me know if you think I am completely wrong with the tuning, or if you've got any questions, just yeah, leave a comment below and catch you soon.